There you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yes, thank you, thank you. You far too kind. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Man, come on, let's do this. Hop on in, buckle in, and let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. What are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, I'm old enough to remember the good old days when gas was only $2 a gallon. What? Yep. And it was only in 2008 when Bush was leaving office, Obama inherited uh, gas prices was under $2. And as soon as he got in, gas prices went up. Six out of those eight years under Obama, gas was over $3 and three fifty. Okay. I also remember he was running against uh, Mitt Romney. He said, we'll never see $2 again. You can drill all you want. You could frack, you could uh, go offshore, you'll never see $2 again. Those are the days of the past. So we accepted it and we thought it was a new normal. Next time you hear some politician trotting out some three-point plan for $2 gas, you let them know we know better. Tell them we're tired of hearing phony election year promises that never come about what we need is a serious, sustained, all of the above strategy for American made energy. Then Trump comes into office and then boop, we had $2 gas again. $210, $225, right? And um, I thought we'd never see $2 again. So now we have Biden comes in, Biden gets elected, quote unquote. And then the gas prices went right back to three dollars three fifty. So guys, I don't hear nothing about you saying presidents don't have no say so about gas prices. Because I remember twenty twenty when the presidential debate was going on, Biden says this. I just want to give him a chance to respond, okay. and then we can come Go back. Ahead. Let's stay on. We're, we're staying on this issue. Number one. No more subsidies for fossil fuel industry. No more drilling on federal lands. No more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. Ends. Number one. Okay, so now we're here, right? 2022, during the midterm elections, uh, gas prices are going up. And Biden had to do something about the gas prices. So instead of him taking accountability, he blames Putin invasion of Ukraine for the gas prices. So Mr. Genius here, Mr. Biden had a smart idea. He wanted to go to the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, SPR, and tap into that. And he says this. The decision today is not without cost here at home. Putin's war is already hurting American families at the gas pump. Since Putin began his military buildup on Ukrainian borders, just since then, the price of the gas at the pump in America went up 75 cents. And with this action, it's going to go up further. I'm going to do everything I can to minimize Putin's price hike here at home. In coordination with our partners, we've already announced that we're releasing 60 million barrels of oil from our joint oil reserves. 
half of that, 30 billion, million, excuse me, is coming from the United States. And we're taking steps to ensure the reliable supply of global energy. We're also going to keep working with every tool at our disposal to protect American families and businesses. So I'm thinking that this was our reserves, our backup reserve, our backup plan for our jets, you know, for our, uh, fighter jets. But no, he tapped into it, released millions of barrels a day, and but he said he's going to refill it. Now, now here's the time to refill it. And they come out and say this. Biden administration is backing off on refilling the country's emergency oil stockpile, at least for now. That's because the Energy Department says the administration is no longer going to be buying up to three million barrels of crude oil for a reserve site in Louisiana because... Uh, of a recent increase in gasoline prices. So they're letting that oil go to market instead of saving it and putting it in the stockpile. Yep, yep, yep. Now we're in trouble. Now we are in trouble. If we have a war going on right now, we can't even fuel our jets right now. I guess we're going to have to use pixie dust or something to get our jets to fly over and protect us. All right, nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about our national security. Moody's economists believe that if gasoline prices in the U.S. spike above $4 a gallon and stay there, it could have huge political consequences for November's election, tipping the scales against the incumbent President Biden and in favor of former President Trump. And so we ask the DEI press secretary hire, Jean Pierre. The Haitian Libesian, we asked her about the latest development, and so this is what she says. Uh, so, you guys started draining the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to try and help with the Putin price hike a few years ago. You said you were going to refill it, but now it doesn't seem like that's happening. Why? Well, from I, I believe the Department of Energy is uh, is responsible for for that uh, particular uh, component is refilling refilling that. So I would refer you to the Department of Energy. I know there are certain components to that uh, and how they were going to move forward in refilling uh, refilling it. I, they would have more specifics on that for you. Okay. Yep. Yep. There you go, guys. No issue at all. It's only our national security. Don't worry about it. Joe's on the job. Okay. Get out of here. <laughs> if you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends. And tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> All right. Till next time, guys. I'll see you again. All you knuckleheads, get off my lawn.